a court in Anambra has remanded a Catholic priest for allegedly raping and impregnating a teenager in Anambra State. The Children's Sexual and Gender-Based Violence Court sitting at the Chief Magistrate Court in Oka, Anambra State has remanded a Catholic priest, Reverend Father Nwiwe Stephen, for allegedly raping and impregnating a teenager. The magistrate ordered the prosecutor to transmit the original case file to the office of the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice of Anambra State. Daily Trust reported on Sunday, November 26, 2023. The Catholic priest was also accused of forcefully taking the pregnant minor to Benin City, Edo State, where she was delivered of her baby. But police investigation revealed that the whereabouts of the state baby is still unknown. The offense of having sexual intercourse with a minor is punishable under Section 32, Subsection 2 of the Child's Right Law of Anambra State, 2004. Nwiwe was among the priests expelled by a popular Catholic faith-based religious congregation in Olo Imu State, known as the Two Hearts of Love Congregation, Ugunso, in 2018, for alleged misconduct inimical to the image of the other. The priest had reportedly met the teenager at St. Abba, the Great Catholic Church Parish, Obosi, in Anambra State, where he was invited for a religious church program. The victim, while answering questions in court during remand proceedings on Monday, November 20, 2023, said the priest took her from her parents to live with him when she was 14 years old, promising to sponsor her education while she equally served as his cook. She stated that not long after she moved into the priest's house, he allegedly started forcing himself sexually on her, saying he continued the act until she became pregnant at the age of 17. The minor further stated that when she informed the priest about her pregnancy, the priest took her from Iala, Anambra State, where they lived, to somewhere in Benin City, Edo State, to the house of a man and a woman who the priest introduced to her as his brother and brother's wife. But when I gave birth to my baby at a native birth attendant house in Benin City, I was told that the baby died. And when I made efforts for them to show me the dead baby, they said the baby had been buried, she stated. When the court asked her if she had been gangrene before, the minor noted, Why on our way to Benin City, father told me to say that I was gangrene, but I have never been gangrene before, except the one that this father did to me in his house, she stated. Witnesses were bound over to appear before the High Court to give evidence whenever the case would be mentioned. However, the Defense Counsel applied for bail of the defendant, urging the court to exercise his discretion of bail in favor of the defendant, while citing Section 13, Subsection 3, Section 71, Subsection 3, Section 72 and 73 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Law of Anambra State 2022, as well as Section 35 and 36 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. He also prayed the court to grant bail to the priest in most liberal terms, assuring the court that Nwiwe would never jump bail if granted, but the police prosecutor prayed the court to refuse bail to the clergyman, stating that the case before the court was an offense against a minor who was supposedly under the spiritual guardianship of the defendant. Ruling on the bail application, the presiding chief magistrate, Genevieve Osekwe, 
stated that the case before the court was an offense punishable with life imprisonment, regretting that the offense of rape against minor was becoming rampant in the society. She warned that the court would not fold its hands to watch the society decay, irrespective of whose horse is God. The court gave numerous instances of similar offenses which had appeared before it in the past, mentioning specifically a case involving a 75-year-old man who also allegedly raped a minor and was accordingly remanded. She therefore adjoined the case to 6 December 2023. Meanwhile, a bandit kidnapped over 110 residents from Zamfara community. The targeted individuals were said to have resisted paying the sum of 110 million naira levy imposed on them by the notorious bandit leader. Mohammed explained that the bandit kingpin directed each of the four communities to pay certain amount of money to make up of 110 million naira to them. After 110 persons were kidnapped by bandits in Zamfara State, Maru local government area, for not paying a renowned bandit boss 110 million naira a month in levy, the community abandoned four of the affected areas, according to Punch newspaper. Armed bandit kidnapped 110 persons on Friday night after invading four communities in the local government on suspicion of not paying the 110 million naira fee levied by the infamous bandit boss. Ibrahim Mohammed, a local resident, told Punch newspaper over the telephone that people from the four villages, namely Mutumji, Kwana, Mahuta, and Ugwawa Kawa have fled to Balele town in search of safety after the bandit leader threatened to return and kidnap more people if the 110 million naira levy was not paid by the deadline. We have to flee to other places due to the fear that after adopting 110 people, the leader of the bandit sent a warning letter to Ross that we must pay the levy within a week or else he will send his men to come and abduct more people, he said. Mohammed explained that the bandit kingpin directed each of the four communities to pay certain amount of money to make up the 110 million naira. According to him, Mutumji village is expected to pay 50 million naira. Kwana is expected to pay 30 million naira. Mahuta is expected to pay 20 million naira. And Ugwawa Kawa is expected to pay 10 million naira. According to Mohammed, the four villages are currently deserted stressing that they are only animals and the sick persons who could not go anywhere. The only thing you will see if you go to those villages are the animals and the sick persons or the old ones who cannot trek to other places, he added. Mohammed further stated that the bandit kingpin has been collecting levy in the four villages, lamenting that Authorities are aware of their predicament but could not do anything to protect them. He said, We have been paying levies to bandits just because we have nobody to protect us and we have been reporting these issues to both the state and the local government but nothing has been done. We are still calling on the federal government to please come to our aid. We have been in a terrible situation in the last four years. We have yet to harvest our crops because we could not settle the 110 million naira imposed on us by the bandits. 
all efforts made by Punch newspaper to speak to the spokesperson of the state police command in Zamfara State, ASP Yazid Abubakar failed as he could not be reached on telephone as at the time of filing this report. Meanwhile, six people, four Fulani persons and two Bajia farmers have lost their lives in a fresh clash between Fulani and Baji vigilante group in Beji, Baso local government area of Niger state. It was gathered that the crisis which occurred on Wednesday at Beji had created tension among residents of the town. This is the second time Fulani and vigilantes would clash in Beji market. The force was on November 8, 2023, claiming two lives and leaving seven others hospitalized. Some residents who spoke on condition of anonymity say the incident banditry activities in the area since July this year was what degenerated into the tribal clash. Residents lamented incident kidnappings and killings by bandits between July and September forcing some of them to resort to passing night in ceilings of their rooms for fear of being kidnapped or killed by bandits. They said with the intervention of security operatives who began regular patrol of the Beji Zungeru Road, the situation had become calm in recent times. The Niger State Commissioner for Homeland Security, Bello Mohamed Agia, confirmed the recent clash at the Nigerian Air Force Base Mike Kunkele during the skill acquisition program organized by the Nigerian Air Force. He said the state government was meeting with stakeholders with a view to addressing the recurring crisis. Meanwhile, bandits on motorcycle have kidnapped over 150 plus villagers in Nigeria over on pay tasks. A total number of 150 people have been adopted by bandits in the northwestern part of Nigeria according to local residents, pointing that dozens of armed men on motorcycles who stormed villages in Zamfara state for the punitive raid. The BBC reports that the residents were kidnapped after the villages failed to pay a task imposed on them by the government, a witness said. One person was killed in the attack. In recent years, kidnapping for ransom has become rift in northwestern Nigeria with locals as well as Christian church leaders targeted. Armed gangs, often referred to as locally bandits, have targeted villages, schools and travelers demanding millions of naira in ransom and making it unsafe to travel by road or to farm in some areas. A local village head said one resident was killed in Friday's attack which eventually saw upwards of 150 people taken away according to the Reuters news agency. The BBC heard from a resident from the village of Mutunji who said he was adopted by the government but managed to escape. We are trying to collect the money but suddenly the bandit came in and robbed people. They took more than 100 people. Most of them were women and young people, the residents said. Locals told the BBC that the government leader named Damana said Damana controlled most of the region in the absence of the state security forces. According to him, Damana is the leader of the bandit and is currently the one controlling most of the local government areas in Zamfara state as the governor and local government chairman in the state are no longer capable of ruling the state. Meanwhile, some suspected armed robbers were killed in Enugu some suspected armed robbers that were in Kekenapeb operating and collecting people of their money and valuables 
were killed today by the police operatives in Enugu. The victims showed in a video that has been going viral on social media were said to be operating in a tricycle popularly known as Kekenapeb. They had huge sum of money suspected to have been stolen from their victims. Some of the victims, including a female and mainly POS operators, claimed to have been robbed by them. The sports of the attacks, according to them, were Ono Asata, Uguese Street, amongst others. Another victim, a driver of an SUV, showed where his windscreen was perforated by bullets suspected of fired by the armed alleged criminals. The state police command is here to make a statement on the incident. The state government recently launched its Operation Rapid Response Squad to check crimes in the state, and these are the squad that neutralized these armed robbers. Unfortunately, four of the armed robbers were killed as they resisted arrest.